YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to Banana Zeppa Gaming. And today on Banana Zeppa Gaming, we are filming the 52nd episode of Cage Talk. And today's Cage Talk is going to be a breakdown slash review of the seven round NFL draft for the Arizona Cardinals. So I'm going to go over their picks, what I think about the picks, if I like the picks, and my thoughts on the pick overall. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get into the first round. So I bet that background noise, it should be gone, but the Arizona Cardinals, they are on the clock at pick 23, and I would have rather them trade back, because how the board fell, 98% of the good receivers were gone, you just had maybe Traylon Burks and Jahan Dotson. And most of the good edge rushers were gone. You had George Kalafitz and David Ojabo and Josh Pascal still there. But David Ojabo is currently injured. Josh Pascal is more of a day two pick. So I was hoping that we would trade back. And we did. I'm going to pull up the picks that we have. Because we got an extra third round pick and we got a certain player. So now the Arizona Cardinals have pick 55, 87, 100, 201, 215, 244, 256, and 257. And the Arizona Cardinals also got a player that fills a position of need, which is a wide receiver, and pick 100. And that player is Marquise Hollywood Brown. Now, Marquise Hollywood Brown, he is Kyler Murray's best friend. They train together and they're close. They played at Oklahoma together. I like this pick. We needed a wide receiver. I didn't really like the wide receivers that were there. I heard rumors back in January that we might make a trade for him or might send feelers out and maybe try and go after him if he doesn't resign with the Ravens. But as of this recording, the Cardinals picked up his fifth-year option. So he might be here for the long-term future. I hope he is. Marquise Hollywood Brown, what, he, what I think he brings to this organization is... I'm getting some flashbacks to Larry Fitzgerald and Anquan Bolden. A little. I know that is saying a lot because Anquan Bolden is and was a tremendous wide receiver. He's retired now. And Larry Fitzgerald will always be the what a Cardinal should be. He is one of the best Cardinals of all time. The fact that we got him just for a first round pick alone is amazing. He brings speed, better hands, better route running, to the Arizona Cardinals. He's an upgrade of Christian Kirk. I, I, I'm a fan of Kirk, and I, it pains me to say that, that he, he's an upgrade of Christian Kirk. But Hollywood Brown is going to do so much tremendous stuff for this organization that we have him, Hopkins, Green. We have Rondell Moore, all in the starting lineup that we have Antoine Wesley and that we have Andy Isabella but I can see Andy Isabella being the odd man out and then we have the tight ends too we have Ertz, Williams and I'll get to the third tight end a little later then we have Connor and Eno this offense is just about ready to ignite and take over in my mind I'm happy with this. Am I upset that we miss on George Kalafitz? A little. But I'd rather have Marquise Hollywood Brown than one of the wide receivers that went in day two or maybe Traylon Burks because we don't know if they're going to succeed at that next level. And we know that Hollywood Brown will be better than he was when he was in Baltimore. Because Baltimore wasn't a pass-first uh, team. They were a run-first. 
and him and, and Kyler Murray, all they got to do is just practice in the offseason to get that connection going again. Because like I said, these guys are close best friends. And that connection from Oklahoma is going to look amazing in Cardinal Red. Now on to the second round pick. And now in the second round at pick 55, we actually got a player that I wanted that I didn't think we would get. We got tight end Trey McBride. Now, I know some of you are asking, why do we need a tight end? Why? Well, it's simple. We need a tight end, and Trey McBride is the best tight end in this class. The reason why we need a tight end is because Max Williams, he's coming off of a major injury, and he only signed a one-year deal. And we have Zach Ertz, but Zach Ertz is older. So Trey McBride, he can and he might be the tight end for Arizona for the future. And this might be our franchise tight end. And I've been watching Arizona since like 2099-ish. And we have never had that if my memory is correct. And the fact that we get that here with somebody that people have been comparing to Gronkowski and uh, Travis Kelsey is amazing. Trey McBride, he constantly works to gain leverage and routes. One size fits all tight end, strong hands, works to create after Catch finishes with his runs, his weaknesses, he's built much without length, an inconsistent blocker. The Colorado State it's reigning John Mackey Award winner Trey McBride, which is presented to the top tight end in the nation, who recently won the award, has had a pretty successful time upon entering the league. Both Kyle Pitts and TJ Hawkinson were top 10 picks. Mark Andrews and Hassan Bryant didn't come off until later in the third and fourth rounds. Although the former has established himself as the Baltimore's top catcher after the Hollywood Brown trade. McBride isn't a top 10 talent, but he is good enough to be a featured component with this offensive scheme. Last season, he led all tight ends with 90 receptions, 1,121 yards, although he only had one touchdown. Look who he played for. He provided capital on a variety of manners, whether as an inline tight end, off the wing tight end, in the slot, or on the wide out. He isn't an explosive pass catcher compared to the other tight ends. He's more a steady Eddie who's capable of playing multiple roles, running good rounds, and giving good effort and maximizing what's available to him. After all, he has received the second highest receiving grade behind Pitts since the start of the 2014 campaign. The Arizona Cardinals, we are taking a different approach at tight end. Head coach Cliff Kingsbury came into the league as an air raid servant after learning under the wing of Mike Leach. But the Cardinals coach continues to adapt to the pro game. Like I said earlier, we have Max Williams, the game's best blocking tight end. The organization we traded for Zach Ertz. The Cardinals now have a tight end from the 2022 class and McBride, who is yet another weapon to that gauntlet for Kyler Murray to go with Hopkins, Green, Moore, and the more recently acquired Marquise Hollywood Brown. I would personally give this pick a B+. Plus. Now on to the third round pick. The first third round pick. Now to be honest with this next pick, it shocked me. So with the 87th pick in the third round, 
Arizona took edge rusher Cameron Thomas from San Diego State. Now, Cameron, the edge rusher slash linebacker, I just talked to him playing linebacker, kind. His strengths are interior pass rush, or non-stop effort, hand uses and counters, can get skinny and shoot gaps. Uh, his weakness is quickness off the snap, flexibility, su suspect power at the point of attack. Cameron Thomas is technically listed as an edge rusher, but he's really an interior defender in a defensive end's body. He's at his best when he's lined up with the tackle or is reduced down over the guards in center. He's 6'4", 267, lacks juice when coming off the edge. However, he should be able to win in two clear areas in the NFL. First off, mortar runs were while hot he may not be able to consistently beat offensive tackles off the line of scrimmage but he his persistent effort and hand uses will make him a headache for any opponent on any given day the second team all-american who has registered an impressive 20.5 tackles for loss 10.5 sacks last season give Tackles and guards fits when collapsing the pocket by slanting or shooting gaps. All pro football focus Austin Gill. The underclassman is ranked first in pass rush win rate when lined up head to head or inside an offensive tackle. Thomas's fit with the Arizona Cardinals is an in interesting one since he's not going to be a true stand up edge defender. Instead, he can capitalize on his intense experience playing the interior, either as a head-up base end, or by kicking to the, kicking it inside next to J.J. Watt. Either way, the Cardinals add another long, physical, rentless player to their defensive front, and they are going to be ready to ball out. Now on to the next third round pick. And we're back on the clock at pick 100. This is the pick that we got for when we traded down and got Hollywood Brown. And and during Kids Talk 49 when I did the seven rounds with trades for the Arizona Cardinals, the player that I wanted to take after I traded down is still on the board at pick 100. And I think we should go out and get him. And it is a position of need. So with the 100th pick of the 2022 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select my J. Sanders, edge rusher, Cincinnati. So we took Sanders like in the third round at pick 100. I was a real big fan of my J. Sanders coming out of the draft. Or coming into the draft, too. I was a big fan of his coming out of the draft from last season. His strengths are explosive first step quickness, accelerates around the edges to the quarterback, hangs tough against much bigger O linemen, shoots with his hands with a legit pop. His weaknesses that I've noticed is leaner frame, lack of bulk, built stiff in the hips. Often too eager to get called upsides. Sanders is a perfect example for this year's class between those who box scouts and those who actually watch film. Sanders put together a disappointing senior campaign statistically with only 7.5 tackles, 2.5 sacks. However, coaches in the American Athletic Conference still named him to the All-AAC first team because they saw an Eds defender who consistently made impact on opposing offenses by flying off the ball to beat blockers through his four years. Cincinnati's coaching staff has also admitted to playing Sanders out of position, per Jordan Reed from ESPN. 
The 6'5", 228-pound defender is best when he is asked to play a hybrid role and coming off the edge. However, the Bearcats often use him head up, alignment opposing offensive tackles. Sanders ha has held his own and has never complained because his team has needed him to do so. But he should thrive when he is placed in a more traditional edge rushing situation with the Arizona Cardinals. His frame is a concern because he doesn't have to bulk up much, so it should not be a concern. But if he doesn't poke up much, then it should be. But he will. Holding the point of attack, he weighed only 228 at the combine. Although he was dealing with an illness at that time, he was having trouble keeping food down. From According to Ian Rappaport, I see Sanders uh, bulking up going into uh, training camp. And with the back-to-back -back selections of Sanders and Thomas, Sanders have provided the Arizona Cardinals with a significant boost to the defensive front. Thomas can serve as Mr. Inside, while Sanders can be Mr. Outside. Now that Marcus Golden is getting older, he's 31, the Cardinals don't have to take another edge rusher, or don't have another edge rusher. True to the standard of being a Chandler Jones on their roster. Because Jones is now playing for the Raiders. Sanders is lightning quick burst. Should give the Cardinals a true edge rusher presence. And maybe he can help fill the shoes of missing Chandler Jones. So I expect him and Thomas to both be playing on the edge this upcoming season because they got big shoes to fill. I'll take maybe another edge rusher and undrafted free agency or bring in a decent vet and then I would not take another one is, is what I want to say when I said don't take another edge rusher. Now on to the next pick. I want to add a little more to that. I am a big fan of Monty Sanders. The fact that we got him at pick 100 when I've seen most mocks have him going in maybe the early 50s, mid 70s. I'm thrilled. Monty Sanders, I personally believe that he will be a big piece in this defense going forward. And now that I just saw who we got from the undrafted free agency class, it seems like we're getting like ball hogs, man. And Monty Sanders will give us a pass rushing boost that we need. Now that Jones is gone, I know I've said that before, but he has such a high ceiling. I personally believe he could be a top 50 pick in like any other draft class. I'm that high on the guy. And I can't wait to see him in Cardinal uniform. Once his and Trey McBride's uh, jerseys come out, you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to buy one. All right, now let's get to the uh, sixth round pick. And with 201 pick of the 2022 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select running back Keontae Anthony out of USC. To me, I saw this pick coming because we need to replace Chase Edmonds. Yes, we're going to have the Chase Edmonds his presence known not on the field. But the Arizona Cardinals is built to throw the ball. Yes, the NFL is a pass-first league, yet the Cardinals are rooted in the Cliff Kingsbury all-air raid mindset. James Conner adds the physicality to the entire unit as a tough runner, so Keontae Ingram can be the squad's third down back, and that's what the Cardinals need, because Keontae Ingram... Uh, James Conner and Eno Benjamin, and then we have Jonathan Ward uh, maybe getting a little bit of reps in between. That is a nice little running back room right there. Maybe I'll try and bring in a veteran 
in just in case for camp somebody cheap but I, I would be okay with this running back room Ingram looks like a good player from the film that I've seen on him and I did not expect I did not think he they were gonna go Ingram I thought they would go uh, Robinson but Ingram's a good pick here now on to the next pick. So the Arizona Cardinals come back on the clock at pick 215. And we need to upgrade the offensive line a little. So the 215th pick, the Arizona Cardinals select. Lucidus Smith, guard, Virginia Tech. Now the Arizona Cardinals, they get a top 10 interior lineman from the draft from Blue Report's big uh, board with a 215th pick. More importantly, Smith selects and injects a much-needed youth in our aging offensive line. So, there's that. That's a big, big plus in my mind. Now, the Arizona Cardinals had to wait a while when we made our two selections. And these are arguably two of the best players on the board. The Virginia Tech. Offensive lineman was a tight end coming out of high school. He moved to guard once he got to Virginia Tech. He played left guard and then even a little left tackle with only one start. 37 starts at left guard. At 6'3", 318, he ran a 40 yard dash at 5.18. He says he feels better as a run blocker than a pass blocker, while some scouts are saying the opposite. So the Cardinals get a stud of a player at 215, and they must be extremely happy. So is the Kyler Murray, because this guy's a top 10 interior lineman in the draft. Now on to the next pick. Arizona is back on the clock, and they go to pick 244 in the seventh round, and they select Christian Matthews, defensive back from Valdosta State. Now. The fact that we kind of ignored, we didn't kind of ignore, we flat out ignored defensive back into the seventh round, to me is telling that Arizona feels extremely confident in Mark Wilson, Byron Murphy, and Jeff Gladney, who we signed Jeff Gladney in the offseason, I think, to a two-year deal. He was a first-round pick like two years ago, the first right. Uh, and he got let go because of some off-the-field issue. I'm pretty sure we're going to bring back uh, Robert Alfred. And we also have White Taker and like another DB. I forgot his name. The fact that we waited so long is showing that we feel confident to me. This grade in no way reflects how Matthew, who is a big athlete, who could be used like on the goal line because Chris Matthews has a lot of potential it's just a shame that we waited so long to address a major need but I see us bringing in a veteran and maybe hoping that everything pans out because all we for all we know that Jeff Gladney Robert Alfred on his way back Byron Murphy and Marco Wilson will be the starting four uh, CBs with Whitaker uh, going in and out. Chris Matthew, I, I hope he does good. Now on to the next pick. Jesse Lucada, defensive end slash linebacker from Penn State. Lucada was one of the better defensive ends listed in the uh, draft for day three prospects the Arizona Cardinals where we now have Maja Sanders as the speed demon off the edge Lucada will be a barrel right through the blockers the Cardinals landed two very different edge rushers who are both extremely efficient in what they do I really like this pick for the Arizona Cardinals and I cannot wait to see what they do with these guys I would have 
Lucetta and Sanders like in rotation. Let all these guys learn from under J.J. Watt. Because who better to learn from than one of the best, in my mind, defensive ends in this generation. Well, my generation. Now on to our last pick. Now with this last pick, we are back on the clock right after at 2.57, and we take one of Kyler Murray's go-to uh, blockers from Oklahoma, Marquise Hayes, guard. Now Marquise Hayes, he has a nasty attitude, vice-like grip, smart player who regularly picks up a defender's blitz and games and is rugged at the point of attack. That's his strength. His weaknesses is a pad, a pad high level, uh, movement skills on off balance too often. A certain old school mentality flows through Oklahoma's Marquise Hayes. The three year starter at left guard is a barroom brawler ready to beat up any defender in front of him. His Tekken. His technique and his attitude were endure him to this Colton staff, and he could become a tone setter along the front five, blocking his boy Kyler. Uh, Hayes stands in at six foot five, plays tall for an interior blocker. He's likely never going to be viewed as a technician with a stellar, repeatable hand usage or footwork to make up for that shortcoming. The Oklahoma product does have long arms, 34 and 78 inches. Wingspan is 83 and a half. The two-time academic All Big 12 honoree takes his frustrations out on the field and it shows. Hayes has pa power and is a power player with an upper body tone with grip strength to manhandle assessments and set a firm interior to pocket. The Arizona Cardinals did a wonderful job at getting this fantastic value this late in the draft. With two standout guard prospects, they landed Smith and earlier and Hayes right here. Is an even better investment than Bleacher Report's third ranked guard prospect. Yes, Marquise Hayes is Bleacher Report's third ranked prospect. This could arguably be the steal of the draft. And that does it for the draft, but I'm going to quickly go over the undrafted free agents that we have signed as of May 1st uh, at uh, 2 a.m. First undrafted free agent is Jarrell Baker Jr., defensive back from Georgia Southern. Baker is... Projected to be a developmental player that will likely start on the practice squad. Plenty of snaps played in college and wins with his physicality and reading route indi indications. Will struggle to make an impact at the next level due to his lack of athleticism and technique. He can be a special teams player. Uh, I like this. Low risk, high reward pickup right here. And it's another DB. And if for some reason he needs to play DB and be on the field on the defense in the starting lineup at least we have somebody that we can develop he should not be a starting DB for us he should be a special teams player and that's what I can see his highest ceiling right now being up next we have a legacy member and this person is following in his father's footsteps who played at Fresno State, and that is Ronnie Rivers. He's a running back. He's ranked as a 5.58. That's his prospect rating. Uh, his 40-yard dash is 4.6. Vertical is 3v6.5. Broad jump is 119. I like Rivers here. Low risk, hot reward. He could maybe sneak his way and get a game or two in, bearing any injuries that Arizona gets throughout the season if he stays on the roster or the practice squad. So just like uh, Baker, low risk, high reward. 
Coming up next, we have Steve Kime's favorite position, and that is a linebacker. This linebacker, I haven't really studied much, and that is Chandler Wooten from Auburn. I mean, we need special team players because we lost uh, Kyle Fitz. I can see maybe Wooten being a special team player, being that linebacker that he was, maybe. I can see maybe that being his ceiling. And at least we didn't really take one in the draft. There's one that we took in the draft, but he's listed as a edge rusher slash linebacker slash uh, outside linebacker. And that was uh, Jesse. But uh, Wooten here, I'm okay with. Up next, we have Will Miles, edge rusher from Central Methodist. Will, I'm okay with Will. Will is a beast with great measurables. The former Central Methodist passer, 6'5", 281, with an almost 36-inch arm span and 35-inch vertical. He's versatile. He can play many positions across the D-line, and he's a two-time all-conference. And he also had 15.5 tackles for loss. Like all the players that we have signed for the undrafted free agents, low risk, high reward. These guys are the low risk being uh, we didn't have to really give up anything or do anything to get them. High reward, they can be key uh, pieces for the team going forward. Up next, we have our last uh, signing on the undrafted free agents as of right now. And that is Stephen Robinson, wide receiver. I can see this guy maybe taking Andy Isabella's spot. Slash being a punt return guy if he makes the roster. Because Andy Isabella is even getting traded or cut. And then Antoine Wesley and maybe this guy would take over his spot. So we get technically two receivers in this class. One being Hollywood Brown from that trade and Mr. Robinson, and I'm okay with that. And that is it for this 2022 draft. As of now, we're, we are done signing the undrafted free agents. I'm just going to run over everything. I am a fan of what we did in the first by trading down, getting a third, and Hollywood Brown. I really didn't like the options there for us at 23. And the only person I would have taken is maybe George Kalafitz, but I'm, I'm okay with trading down, getting arguably somebody who could be your number one receiver in a few years, who is best friends with your quarterback, and the extra pick that got us, Manji Sanders. Trey McBride was our second round pick, was our first pick officially. Some fans don't get it. But if you think about it, this is a long-term thinking. We need a tight end number two right now because we got Zach Ertz on a three-year deal. Max Williams, he's signed with us again, but he, he's hurt. And Trey McBride is arguably one of the best tight ends to come out in a while, other than Kyle Pitts. I really don't can't remember any other tight end but he is uh, he's one of the top 10 tight ends from the past couple draft classes in my mind then in the th third round is it yeah the third round we took Cameron Thomas edge rusher we needed edge help and he was one of the better guys on the board at that point I love the pick. He can play outside linebacker as well. Which he probably will be in rotation for that. Outside linebacker, edge rusher. And I think the Cardinals got a good good pick there. Because he was mocked to go high third, late second. And one of my favorite picks of the draft, Mazi Sanders. Somebody who ceiling is like a late second, early third as well. The fact that we got him at pick 100 is outstanding. And Maji Sanders is going to wreak havoc on the NFC West, the Cardinals division rivals for years to come. And then we come over here to, I believe, the next person that we took is the uh, 
is Ingram. Ingram, we needed a running back to try and throw that void left by Chase Edmonds. I like it. Latasia Smith is the following pick. We needed guard youth. We need more youth in the offense, and we got it with him. He's one of the better interior linemen in this class. Chris and Matthews is like my least favorite pickup from the draft because we had Goodrich there. I'd rather take Goodrich at that one, but it's whatever. Uh, Jesse, the linebacker slash edge rusher from Penn State. Good pickup. We need to get a little bit younger on the defense, and we do that. And then the last pick, Marquise Hayes, we got a top 10 interior lineman at pick 257. This guy is one of the best linemen in the class, so we got him at 257. That is an absolute steal. That is the one of the steals of the draft. So if you would ask me what's my favorite pick, favorite pick would be maybe Marcus Hayes slash Trey McBride. So what's the last Maji Sanders? My least favorite pick would be Christian Matthews because I really don't know that much about that guy. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Tap the little bell on that YouTube app so you guys never miss an upload. And I believe the next Cage Talk is going to be the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World ranking. It will be out maybe a couple days or, or a week after Dominion so until then like subscribe I'll see you guys on the next one peace